1073 Casey's R&B and Hip Hop. I got a special guest in the building today. Mr. Miller, Carlos Miller, what's poppin'? What's happening? You excited to see me? I'm very excited to see you. And I got distracted by that bling on your finger. Let me see. Oh, that's just that little thing. Let me see, Carlos. These old things. Dang. These old trinkets. Carlos is getting money. I Stop see you, Carlos. Stop playing with me. Stop telling people that. This is, a, this is a, a, a big radio platform. Don't be telling people I got money. And you know what? Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so the ladies are going to be like, ooh, I want Carlos to be my Valentine. It's not a real holiday. Whatever. <laughs> I was going to ask you, like, a lot of guys don't believe in Valentine's Day, so you're one of them that doesn't believe in Valentine's Day? Yes. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not just I'm not buying you nothing else. <laughs> you bought enough for the ladies? Yeah, I bought them enough stuff. Y'all so stop what, being so selfish. So what if someone asks you to be their Valentine Day? I'm not doing it. You're not doing no, it? No, not unless there's a lot of lot of benefits for me. I'm not just doing this to be doing this. You there's just be, shattered a whole bunch you of You got to give me a lot of gifts. You got to make me feel special. I'm not doing that for somebody else this year. We oh, so get, oh, so you've been burned in the past years. Man, y'all don't get, it's not a holiday for us. We, it's not for us. That's for y'all. But what if we get you chocolates and like something We don't nice? even like that type of stuff. See? <laughs> we don't I don't care. But us ladies need things to make us feel nice. <laughs> it's a man's world. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't. Oh my God, Carlos! Y'all try to convince me. This is a setup. This is this Valentine's Day was created by a white man to sell business cards. But it's a nice holiday too Mm-mm. for candy and stuff and lingerie. That's nope. for you guys. Nope, that's not for us. See, we don't care about lingerie. That is true. This is too real for you. See, this conversation is it dying. It is true. No, I know, but I like Valentine's Day. Well, I like just it. say that. Don't try to make it seem like everybody else got to like it. No, but us ladies like it, though. I'm speaking from you the ladies. You got a Valentine? No, I don't have a Valentine. Why not? Because a lot of men don't believe in Valentine's Day. Maybe it's you. It could be me. See? You are looking forward to Valentine's Day with no Valentine. Well, we got time. <laughs> we have like two weeks. All right, Carlos, he's going to be at the Improv tonight, 7.30 and 10, and then Saturday, 7 o'clock and 10 o'clock. ImprovKC.com to get your tickets. Carlos, what have you, you don't stop. I never stop. You're like on tour every single weekend. I'm on tour by myself. I'm on tour with 85 South Show. I'm on tour while and now. And we got some tour dates with Mike Epps. My God, Carlos, you don't get tired? I don't get tired, baby. This is the comedy game. You got to stay on it. So where do you get your energy from? I can't tell you. <laughs> it's an internal source, ma'am. Internal my source. My happiness comes from myself. You just keep pushing, keep going. Comedy makes you happy, though. Uh, yeah. Being in the comedy world makes me happy. Being Like making people happy. Mm-hmm. makes me happy like the you know to see people smile and laugh it's just you, that's the only emotion like laughter is the only emotion that you can like you know what i mean that you get in and out like mm-hmm. make it happen as you wish so you live in atlanta right sometimes are you ever at home though no nah. never nah, I, mean, I do probably maybe like only maybe like five shows a week Jeez, Carlos. What? That's so crazy. So is Wild Out, is that filming right now? No, we actually done filming. We just finished filming that like in December. This is how many seasons have you been on there? Uh ten. Ten seasons. But that's not ten years though. That's ten years. Ten it's, seasons. It's like five years, right? No, that's like seven. Okay. Yeah. And so when is the point where you decide to break away from Wild and Out? Because you've been on there for a I'm long nev- time. I would never break away from Wild and Out. Never? No, nah, it's too easy. It's too easy. Like, I'm on TV every day. Cause they I play feel- this show every day. No, I, they literally will have to fire me again before I quit. Again. Again. Yes. I feel like that wasn't a real fire. I, no, I feel it like was. it was a misunderstanding. They shot, they, no, they shot a whole entire season while I was gone. Like, I came back for the last six episodes. That was like season eight, wasn't it? Mm-mm. That was season 13. I was watching it, and I'm like, where's Carlos? Like, like, I, kept, exactly. I kept fast forwarding so now, through. So now all the episodes that you play, you see now, like I'm not in a lot of those episodes because those were the episodes they shot while I was gone. Oh, so they're that far behind that they're showing? Yes. Oh, dang. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Well, I feel like they People are like, it. man, what Carlos? I'm like, I was fired. You do not understand that. They didn't bring me back in into like the last little piece of season 13. And it was Charlemagne that smoothed everything out, and he called up Nick? Or? He did call Nick. I don't know why he called Nick, but he called him, and he was like, yo, what's up with that, man? It's just not right. And I was, you know, the fans actually 
gave me a lot of support and called the network and sent a like, bunch of social media stuff. And I was like, hey, we want, want him back. So they brought me back. Well, I will say that that show is nothing without you, uh, Chico, being in D.C. Young Fly. You guys are quite really? the trifecta. I, yeah. I really appreciate that because it's, it's really not as easy as it looks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that show's been around for a long time. You've seen us do a lot of stuff. So We've seen a lot of people be recycled in and out through the show. And I feel like some people, they, you know, when you see them different places, they don't stand out like how they do at Wild and Out. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing, too. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Because it's like, you know, to be a part of this, this, you know, it's this like this comedy college. And then mm-hmm. you see a few people who, you know, they didn't deserve to not be there. It's just that, you know. They, they just didn't shine the way that they should have. Well, it's not even about the, that's not even it all the time. It has nothing to do with if you're funny or not. It's all in about what certain people think people, like what certain people think the rest of the people think of you. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like a lot of people fall victim to that, and it has nothing to do with their actual talent. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's the sad part about it. Because mm-hmm. there's always some some people, some people, they'll never tell you who these people are, who makes decisions, They and they not even, they don't even know, like, the value that certain people bring to this, to this, you know, to the show. Yeah. Because they're not, they're not personal enough to understand, like, he works because he's, super quiet or she works because she's nice to everybody he works because so you're saying it's more of a political one. thing yeah mm-hmm. it's, but it's just like it's Hollywood once you get this once you get the chemistry right stop messing with it mm-hmm. but they always want to bring and add and that kind of slows us down a lot too but there's like the core group though <clears throat> you, you're part of the it's core not, group no, you don't feel not, like that I, nah it's too yeah. it's not a core because yeah. there's so many people that is true though it's literally too many people so do you ever feel like you see someone on there and you're like, what are they doing here? I say that out loud. That's one of the reasons why they let me go because I was very vocal about these people oh. not being good. Yeah. But I, the truth hurts, I guess. Yeah, the truth does hurt. But then it's like, it doesn't make sense because how can you have a show with comedians and rappers? Comedians and rappers, right? Like comedians, rappers, whatever, whatever. Some people are professional comedians. Everything they say is going to be funny. Mm-hmm. Some people are rappers. Nothing they say is going to be funny. How can you compare the two? Maybe they just want them for the freestyle, the the bonus round. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's my way. thought. That's my thought. Who knows? So, Carlos, at the end of the show, is there ever a point where people like tension? Because yes. I, I feel like comedians, they are yes. sensitive. Famous people are very sensitive. Absolutely. Just, so. It's not just the people worried about the comedians, man. These people walk in. A lot of these people come in like they better than the show or they got this attitude or they so arrogant. Like, Are you talking about the artists or just the... Yeah, the, like the, the guests. A lot of them, they really want to be way more important than they actually are. We're like, man, nobody knows you. Um, I, I, I haven't caught up on this season yet, but I think Black China's on this season. Black China is one of my favorite guests. She really? is way more cool than people think. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see Black China, you think she'll be all like, hmm, She Black has China. tough skin. She I, is a real chick. She a real hood chick. And she really, like, she really about that. She really is on some, you, like, she's nothing what you think she is. So, but I, I want to ask, though, at the end of that episode, though, did Justina have to go run and hide to her green nah, room? Nah. No? That's the thing about Black China is, like, she get it. She's been on the show a couple times. Okay, I feel like I've only seen her once on the show. No, but she's that, been that looked kind of tense, she, though. She was on the show, a couple, like, a couple seasons ago, and then she just recently did another one. I mm-hmm. think she's been on there, like, two or three times. Okay. Okay. Um, so, 85 Style Show. Mm. How is it to tour with? Do you even get to see them? Like you guys are doing your own thing. Yeah. So do you guys get to see each other much, or is that the only time when you're really interacting? What do you mean, when, like, like on stage? Yeah. I mean, you guys kick it a lot, or we do kick it a lot. Cause, but you know, we all do shows like all throughout the week. So usually, by the time we pull up to do eighty five South show. It's been a couple of days since we've seen each other, and that's what the energy is so crazy because we'll all break off and do our own shows or something, or we'll be on you know, like a show together, mm-hmm. and then we'll go do our show, which is completely different. You know, it's just it's different. I don't even know what the what to tell you. Like, what's the biggest difference? It just doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like. It's just like kicking it with your homies. So. You just feed off each other's energy, and exactly. that chemistry is just so crazy. Because you, I, I think I saw, uh, you, I heard in one interview that you did that you guys didn't even know each other prior to 
um, I guess you well, guys well, were brought together. Well, yeah, we really didn't. I mean, I knew Chico. I didn't meet DC until way later, though. He's a lot of energy. Like you two are That's very a, like, he's calm, a, cool, man, collected. You need that guy, man. You need that guy to be around. You need friends like Chico and DC. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You need a friend who's gonna be your crazy go to friend who you know you can call, who can get you out of jam. You know that person mm-hmm. that you wanna go to war with. Mm-hmm. That person you wanna be around is funny as hell, who always gonna keep something going on. Mm-hmm. And that's the funniest part to me about DC is it's like he don't even know how funny he is. And then Chico He's so logical. You get what I'm He's saying? He's so smart. He's so, yeah. He is so smart and technical with it. And it's, it's very impressive just to see the connections of stuff that he makes together. But a lot of people don't know Chico just as wild as DC, though. Really? Yeah. That's the crazy part. But it's it's in a it's a different kind of wild, but it's the same, if, if that makes sense. Okay. I never got that from Chico. I've met Chico him a few times. Chico is very, he's a very, uh, Loose, You're very laid person. back. You're very laid back. Now, with your comedy, you are laid back. You, I feel like in real life, though, you're more just like, you don't talk much. I don't think my comedy would work if I if I wasn't laid back. Like, if I was stern and I took a stance on something I really believe, I just I just don't operate like that. Yeah. I, I know that I look at my comedy from the fan's point of view. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if I was sitting there watching that, why would I want to hear this? Like what's the what's the joke value content of this to me? I I'm not just the person who's just gonna go up there and say a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, I think you're very wise. Um, we're growing up though. Who gave you your advice? I grew up in Mississippi. I grew up around a lot of older people, so that's one thing that you always got was a whole bunch of advice. Mm-hmm. Some of it was too too mature for you at that point in life, but. You live and you learn and you grow through you grow into these things. Like I used to always hear old dudes in Mississippi, like they have this thing where they'd be like, Yeah, keep living. Just keep on living. And they was like, Well, what does that even mean? And I got like once you get older you realize that at some point <laughs> you have to deal with life. So it's like I grew up getting advice just from my environment, my setting. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Mississippi is one of the roughest places. Like, not like violent rough, but I mean just like Still the really quality of life. A is lot of struggle, tension, racial tension there racial too. Racial tension. And it's just not, it's, it's, it's you know, it's kind of, I don't even know the word. It's just kind of behind, the behind in the times. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I think I heard one of my, my friend, um, I have friends in Alabama, and they said that they still have separate proms there. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, they actually do. Well, you, Morgan Freeman made a documentary about that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, uh, I don't know if it's still available on Netflix, but he went to a couple places in Mississippi that did the segregated proms, and he volunteered to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And some of those schools still turned it down. Mm. So with your comedy... And the platform that you have with MTV, are you ever surprised that some people who are your fans, like, oh, you, you, yeah. this is 85 I was in the airport one day. It was this big, big white man. He had a long beard. Like, yeah. He looked like a, a character of the devil. Ah. And he was like, <laughs> you Carlos Miller? Who wants to know? I love you, man. I was watching you on Last Comic Standing. Yeah. Now, he's crazy, the people that, that just take to your comedy. And I see sometimes when I look in the audience and I'll be like, man, where are you watching me? Like, yeah. when did you become a fan? But that MTV platform is something else, though. Right. But it's just like when you get fans that are not black, they are so fragile. All it takes is for you to say one. It doesn't even have to be a joke. It's one thing. And they're like, oh, oh, that's how you feel? But I'm, I think that they were introduced anymore. to you in that way, nah, so they shouldn't get A lot of people, it's, it's, it's different. I Trust me. Fans and people who want to see you are two totally different things. Mm-hmm. Some people come see whoever at the club that weekend. Mm-hmm. But a fan playing this, like they made shirts, they called all their friends, like they've been waiting on you. Mm-hmm. They've been hitting you on social media. Like these are real fans. Yeah. Some people will come in regardless. They don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, well, we at the club, so whoever they have, we'll take it. It's the difference between observers and fans. You have a lot of fans. And I, I was so proud of everybody that showed out because shows don't sell out in Kansas City. Why and not? the 85, you, people are very, it's a, it's a walk-up market. 
I don't know if people like listening. Kansas City is a walk-up no, city. No, it's true, though. It's true, though. People will wait till the day of. They really don't get their tickets in advance. Right. And so for somebody to sell out in Kansas City, you guys sold out here in Kansas City, the 85 South show. So yeah, that's early, big. too. Early. And they were yes. like, I want to add a show. We was like, ah, we might just come back. Kansas I don't know. City doesn't mess with everybody, so I they know. mess with you, Carlos. I know. That's they dope. love you. A lot of these places, been we sold out. Like a lot of We sold over 80,000 tickets for our show like independently this year. Mm-hmm. Well, last year. So this year we want to push it to 150, double up on them or something. So has your life completely changed or is it still pretty much the same? No, nah, my life ain't changed. Mm-hmm. I've been doing, this is my 15th year doing comedy. 15 years? Yeah. Wow. That's Yeah, that's dope to me anyway. Yeah. But no, nah, people always ask you like, when you get your big break or you know they think it was just like yesterday isn't i've yeah. never had it i'm still working <laughs> that's what i'm telling people i'm just i'm just a working comic so for then, 15 years that's the that's the trick any comic could tell you that's the hardest part of just staying in the game like being consistent working because Hey, man, people are so shady. They'll so, love you one second and throw you away the next. You're saying that you haven't gotten your big break yet. I feel like you've made it, but... What, what is they even to, making it mean? What is a big break? Well, I'm, well I feel I, like the big break is where you get an excessive amount of money for doing the same thing you've been doing. So then that's where... I haven't know. gotten an excessive amount. I've just gotten, like, I just kept all my checks from wherever they came from. It's not like I'm balling. I still eat noodles. <laughs> it's just not the main the course. Are good though, Carlos. It's just not the main course. Oh nah. my goodness, no, but nah, it's not, I haven't had my big break. I tell people all the time, I've been blessed and lucky. Mm-hmm. People don't like to say luck, but I've been lucky because luck is when you, preparation meets opportunity. I had a lot of preparation, and I took advantage of all my opportunities. I remember the first time when I met you, um, you told me that you weren't even supposed to be on Wall and Out. I think no, it was somebody. No, I just showed up and went, and I just was myself, and I talked about those people all day, and they were like, well, we're not going to let you audition. You could be funny all you want. And I was like, well, we're not going to let you audition. You could be funny all you want. And it was like, oh, my God, won't this dude leave? And I was just like, oh, my God, what did you leave? Not like just that, but yeah, just yeah. like antagonizing it, you know, riffing. And they was just like, if we let you go, we're like, will you believe? I was like, yeah, it was, just let me go. And the little dude, he was like, well, you can go on at like 1.30 because you're not here. So I, by the time I got there, it was after lunch. So, like, yeah. the, you know how they do auditions. They'll have, like, the producer people. Uh-huh. And then they'll have, like, the people who are actually making the decisions. Mm-hmm. So it's like they moved. Like when t- by the time I got in the room, all the producer people went on lunch. So mm-hmm. when they went on lunch, Nick actually came in. So I actually like auditioned guy. for Nick. Yeah. So he saw me. He was like, "Man, I've been hearing a lot about you. You crazy." And then it worked in my favor because he went to do the press run, like a day before he got to the city. And Wanda Smith from V103 was like, don't leave Atlanta until you see Carlos Miller. I don't care if he's standing in the parking lot, if he on stage, you gotta talk to Carlos Miller. Don't leave this city without talking to Carlos Miller. And then he was just like, everywhere he went, people that day, like on the press, they were like, man, you gotta get Carlos, you gotta get Carlos. Cause I was working so many, I was hosting like a lot of nights in the city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I had like a buzz in the city. So the people, they were all like giving him, like, man, you gotta check Carlos out before you go. So he had been hearing about me all day. So by the time he saw me, he was like, you Carlos. Man, I thought you was seven feet tall the way people was describing you. That's, so that was like my first little introduction. Yeah. Well, everything like everything happens for a reason though, Carlos. No, I don't. Yes, Some stuff it does. just no, it doesn't. Some yes, stuff it... randomly just happens. Yeah, but that story though is that that was your destiny. That was meant to be. Mm. What are the odds? What are the odds? I just went up there and I, I really just stayed and made them give me an audition. But I was at a breaking point in my life right there. Because at really? that point in comedy, it was like nothing going on as far as just like TV and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, especially like on the black side. Because you know, I don't even know if people understand how racist entertainment is. It's yep. like, Jesus Christ. There's been times where people are like, okay, you can sound a little bit more urban. And I'm like, I'm a black woman. There's black women that sound like me, and there's black women that right. don't we sound do, like me. See, that's what we need, though. We need black women like you that can have that, can have that you know, that universal tone so you can sneak in and get all these good jobs and stuff mm-hmm. like that and still be able to communicate on both sides. So you said that that was kind of like a turning point for you, though. What were you, like, about to give up? or and No, it things? was just that. It wasn't about giving up. It's just that, you know, it's like, I know that I'm going to be doing comedy. But as far as 
me seeing a vehicle that could probably get me to the next platform or, you know what I mean, that could help me establish myself is not any of that. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Who's Got Jokes was probably, like, the only black comedy show that we had at that point. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the time, though, Comic View wasn't around. It- no, and Comic View, right, even now, it's like, they'll bring it back every couple years. But it's like, it's, since it's not, like, a stable it's show, it's not, they not giving it the same attention. It's mm-hmm. just some pop-up, like, oh, we're going to pop up and we'll take 15 people who we haven't seen in a while. Or, you know, we'll get a couple new faces and mm-hmm. show them the rebranding. But it's, it doesn't work like that. Comedy has to be consistent. Like you need a host. You need you need a name and a face that they can put with that. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll watch a bad comedy show if the host is good. Not saying like the show is bad, but if you have somebody who can keep the show moving, mm-hmm, who can mm-hmm. keep the people interested, who knows to come up and they can hit one off and just to break the monotony. A good host can make a make you watch a show that was like the show wasn't good. I like the host. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so important. what's next for you, Carlos? 2020? 2020, 2020 I vision? I'm going to be honest. I don't know. You just go with the flow? I don't know. Are you a planner? Like, do you make a vision board and write things down? I try. I try, but okay. I, I definitely don't have, like, uh, you know, like a, a format or a, uh, or whatever. I just go out and take it one day at a time, one step at a time. I'm going to focus on doing these dates, making the live show better, doing a couple auditions, Stuff like that. Hopefully I can move on to different platforms this year and create some content and get in some movies and, you know, get that big break. You know, yeah. I'm still chasing it. Chasing okay. my big break, so. All right. Well, I'm proud of you, Carlos. <laughs> I never forget the time Carlos came through to the studio. I was only on the radios on Sundays, and I asked him to come on my show, and he came through. So I always appreciate you, Carlos. No, I appreciate you. Thank and just you. watching you grow. Oh, are transition. we having a moment, Carlos? Yeah, you're doing Aww. so good here. And Thank you, you. You have the perfect name to be a very famous lady. So Thank you. Keep pushing and doing your thing. You have a very nice voice. Thank you. Very pretty. Thank you. You're good. You're from the Midwest. <laughs> Y'all got a big uh, Super Bowl coming up. Yes! Who are you going for? You better say it right. I mean, you think I would literally come yeah, to Kansas you City. You could. You could be a trash talker. You think I would come to your city? Yeah. And, t- and, like, cheer for another team? You could. What type of person do you think I am, bro? You're a good person. Man, you know better than that. Shout out. I got to give some shout outs, though. I got to give at least one to my man, Reggie Raglan. He plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. And you know why I'm giving him the shout why out? Why are you giving him a shout because out? Because out of all my partners who in the league, he sent me a whole bag of Kansas City bag. Chiefs stuff. I got the PJs with the feet in them, the hat, the sweater. All of that, man. Yeah. And the only other partner who looked out was um, Lamar Jackson. He sent me one of those, um, the hoodies, the yeah, yeah. The, um, the eight, the, the championship joints. Oh well, see, look, we had Crown Royal hoodies in here. I didn't I'll know take one. Course, but I, I actually take. I think that Crown Royal purple is one of the sexiest colors it's in not the purple, whole. Though. It's red. Nah, Crown Royal, that Crown Royal purple. Yeah, yeah I know nah, what you're talking yeah. about. And but... plus, this is something I'm going to leave you with since we're wrapping up. Okay. Google black men in purple suits. Do we find Omega Sci-Fi? B- no, what I'm saying, though, My black men reach a certain level of greatness when they put that purple suit on. Jaheen, Prince, Steve Harvey. Just Google black men with purple suits on so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Once you get to that purple suit level, you have officially crossed over and broken on in to the other side. So 2020, I'm looking for that purple suit for you, Carlos. Oh, that's exactly what I saw you in that gold and black suit. But I'm not just going to bust my purple suit out just to be doing it. (laughs) It's got to be a special occasion. Now, the gold and black, that's what got him talking. You you know how you just have to get fresh sometimes just to let people know, like, hey, I I do this too. You were a problem. (laughs) Exactly. I like it, Carlos. Exactly. All right, we'll go see Carlos tonight, 7.30 and 10, Saturday, 7 o'clock and 10. Improv KC to get, ImprovKC.com to get your tickets. Drop your social, Carlos. Carlos M. K-A-R-L-O-U-S. There we go. Thank you, Carlos.